Um, so I'm Mark um, Etheridge and um, I'm the curator at St Fagans National Museum of History with responsibility for the LGBTQ plus um, history collection. So just to start off with, for those of you who might not know um, know it, St Fagans is part of a group of seven museums run by Amgedd Cymru Museum Wales. It is on the outskirts of Cardiff and was opened to the public in 1947 as the Welsh Folk Museum. And today, following a £30 million redevelopment and being awarded the Art Fund Museum of the Year Prize in 2019, St Fagans is Wales's most visited heritage attraction. As well as three gallery spaces, it contains over 40 buildings from all over Wales that have been carefully moved and re-erected. But since its opening, St Fagans has not just been about preserving the past, but to benefit the welfare of communities and share their lived experiences. So I started um, in my role in developing the LGBTQ plus collection at St Fagans in 2019. And at that time, there was only a small number of objects in the collection relating to LGBTQ plus history, and there was little on display. So this underrepresentation in the collection meant that our community was hardly visible in either the national collection or its displays. It probably also meant that Amgeth for Cymru was not specifically being seen as an obvious place for members of the LGBTQ plus community to donate objects and thus help towards preserving our heritage. Since then, my work has started to address this and, and it has resulted in a growing collection of over 1,400 items, objects, documents, photographs, and oral histories, covering areas of LGBT history, such as activism, equal rights, pride events, as well as items representing the everyday lives of LGBTQ plus people. I've been working towards making it fully representative of all our community, and this slide here shows the range um, of objects in the collection that together help to tell the story of the LGBT community in um, Wales. And it's important as well to point out here that um, my role is not just um, a specific short-term project and this isn't a project-based um, work, but this is a permanent, um, my, you know, it's mine's a permanent role working towards um, improving LGBTQ plus uh, representation. So for um, this talk today, I wanted to speak about some of the contemporary collecting I've been doing and highlight the importance of this. So for various reasons, such as the ephemeral nature of many objects and lack of physical objects pre the partial decriminalization of homosexuality in 1967, it's proved difficult to build up an historic LGBTQ plus collection. Thus contemporary collecting has been, um, so this contemporary collection has been that it's enabled me to build up a good representative collection very quickly and to establish St Fagans as a safe space for LGBTQ plus collections to be preserved and displayed. And contemporary collection has been vital in um, increasing representation inclusive, inclusivity. And it's helped in diversifying the collection and keeping relevant the stories we tell at St Fagans. And hopefully as the collection um, grows and trust is built up further, more objects will be donated. So I just want to spend a bit of time talking about the range of contemporary collecting I've been doing to give examples of um, how that has helped um, in building up and developing the collection and increasing visibil visibility. So much of my contemporary collection um, collecting has involved working with various community groups from across Wales. For example, in early 2019, I made contact with a group called Glitter Cymru. Glitter Cymru was founded in June 2016 by Vish, who was born in Cardiff of Indian descent. It is a social and support group for LGBTQ plus people of colour in Wales. And the aim of the group is to provide a safe space and to empower its members to feel that their identities are valid and to be seen, um, heard and celebrated. And the first banner was made in 2018 and carried at pride marches to highlight visibility of um, LGBTQ plus people of colour in Wales. It was also used at the first Welsh um, Bain Pride, which was organised by Glitter and held in August 2019 in Cardiff. And also it was hung over the door during um, the monthly Glitter Cymru meetups. And on the slide here, you can see the um, see the banner. So I'd also like to just mention here that St Fagans has a large oral history archive and has been collecting oral history since the 1950s. And I strongly believe that the power of an object is greatly amplified when it is told through the voice of either the person associated with that object or someone who can relate to that object in some way. Also being able to actually hear the voice of that person is very powerful. 
So I've also been building up the LGBT collection with oral histories as part of my um, collection drive. But I'd encourage anyone interested in oral history to join the Oral History Society, where there is a specialist um, sections, including one for um, LGBTQ+, which I'm a committee member. Therefore, when um, working with Glitter members, um, as well as collecting objects, I've also recorded some of their diverse experiences. And I just wanted to play um, one clip from one oral history I did with a member of Glitter about the importance of the banner um, to them and what it means for Glitter Cymru members like, um, like her. So I think this lack of confidence for, from the Bay in the LGBT community is something that we try to tackle. And that banner kind of sums, sums it up, like you need the banner to follow the banner to, um, to be seen, to be understood, and to claim a space. Um, I think the sound has stopped, Mark. Oh. Sorry about that. I'm not sure. Um, Sorry, it obviously hasn't come through the screen for some reason, but yes, that's a bit of a shame because I think the um, the the oral history does um, really give a powerful um, reasoning behind us having the banner because I think it really highlights with some of the collecting that um, this banner could perhaps be seen as a fairly insignificant object without that information you know background information from the members because it's a banner just made out of um card cut out of pieces of card and stapled to a plastic tablecloth um so i think this oh. lack of so um as well as the audio clips i've also been using quotes as part of the catalog cataloging process to add an extra extra layer to the objects and i collected some flyers and photographs from the first bane pride in wales that glitter organized and this quote is from a member talking about the importance of this. Um, and they said, everyone on stage was BAME LGBT. And I think that is very powerful in itself because we don't really get that platform. I work with a number of individuals from Glitter to record their personal experiences, as I said, um, but also working with them to collect objects um, for the collection. And this slide shows Numer who was born in Pakistan and claimed asylum in um, the UK. And the photograph was taken at the first Barry Pride in 2019 and shows the rainbow flag, flag he was wearing as a cape. And um, Numer donated this flag, um, as well as a poem he wrote for the first Bain Pride about his experiences as a gay man in Pakistan. And this slide shows Rahim, an asylum seeker from Morocco, dancing at the big queer picnic in Cardiff in 2019. He's wearing the red belly dancing outfit that he later donated to the museum. And Rahim selected this outfit to donate to the collection, as it meant so much to him as a queer man from Morocco. And in the, in the oral history recording I did with him again, he explains the importance of this outfit to him. So when working with people, I asked them to think about what they would like to see in the collection to represent their story. This means that any object donated has a very special personal connection to them. This, I believe, making it all the more important, but also the one that I hope will then resonate with other members of the community. So as well as working with Glitter, another group mm. I've been working with is TransAid Cymru. And TransAid Cymru is an organisation made up of trans, intersex and non-binary people with mutual aid at the core of what they do. And this placard was used at two um, Gender Recognition Act protests in Cardiff in um, 2020. Um, as a result of that protest, TransAid Cymru was formed and we've collected um, various placards and badges to represent uh, this group. So in the collection, we do have a smaller number of older historic objects from the 70s and 80s, relating to things like the Gay Liberation Front and Section 28. However, um, as I'm sure we're all aware, campaigns for equal rights are still very much ongoing, and we need to make sure we keep up to date with these in St Fagans. So it can be easy to think that um, equal rights for the LGBTQ community has been achieved um, 
but there have been recent high profile events in Wales um, that have in, improved equal rights for our community. For example, previously, gay and bisexual men had been banned from um, giving blood. And this poster is from a late 20th century campaign um, by the N uh, National Union students. But after many years of campaigning, um, good news came in December 2020 when it was announced by the Welsh Government that the ban and some restrictions would be lifted. And I collected a number of objects around this. On the left, you can see um, the Welsh Blood Service information sheet that highlights the new rules for gay and bisexual men donating blood um, that was, came in force on, um, in June 2021. And also on the right, one of the first gay men to donate blood on the first day of the new rules. I've also collected some objects around the Church in Wales bill that was proposed in September 2021 and that would allow same-sex couples to have their civil partnerships blessed in the church, um, the Anglican Church in Wales. And this is a handwritten speech by the um, Right Reverend June Osborne, the Bishop of Landaff, that she gave at um, the meeting um, of the Church in Wales in Newport in September 2021, where the bill was um, passed. And I also collected a report a memorandum relating to the bill. And then also then to give this whole story a more personal element, I also collected this. Um, it's an order of service um, for Father Lee and his partner Fabiano, who are believed to be the same, um, the first same-sex couple to be blessed uh, by the um, Church in Wales. And Father Lee compiled the liturgy from um, the resources now available from the um, Church in Wales authorised liturgy for the blessing of same-sex couples. So together with the um, with the other objects I've mentioned, they, they, they form a nice suite of items relating to the bill, its passing, and then the first um, blessing. Recently, it's been very noticeable in Wales that there have been a number of um, new LGBTQ plus related businesses, events, and groups popping up. And I've been looking to collect from many of these as possible to make sure they are represented in the national collection from the outset. And this slide shows a poster badge and a photograph relating to the Queer Emporium, which was opened um, initially as a temporary pop-up in June 2021. And it's believed to be the first queer, in the, in, queer emporium in the UK, um, which features 15 independent businesses, encouraging the community to um, shop queer. So it's now permanent, um, a permanent shop holding events and a cafe. Um, and it's very much needed alternative to the additional um, LGBTQ plus bars and clubs. So I'd just like to mention briefly as well about some objects relating to pride events that I've recently collected. Pride events are obviously an important part of the LGBTQ plus calendar and various smaller and larger events are held throughout Wales. These events give visibility and celebrate the LGBTQ plus community. And I've recently collected from many of these as contemporary collecting, I feel is very important in this area to show the recent um, expansion of pride events throughout Wales, including many, uh, many firsts. Um, and shows how LGBTQ plus community no longer need to go from um, to large cities such as Cardiff and Swansea um, or even outside Wales to places like London, but can now attend pride events within their own um, communities. And I think that's a sort of very powerful then expression of a local community being themselves within their own community. So these pride events included Lantwick Major Pride, which was the first Vale of Glamorgan Pride event in um, 2018, the first Welsh Bain Pride I mentioned earlier in 2019, and the first um, Barry Pride amongst others. And on the screen are a couple of, um, couple of flyers collected. Pride events, um, during 2020 were very different due to um, COVID. And I collected um, throughout COVID a number of um, virtual um, flyers and things like that. So here are an example from the Wales Wide Virtual Pride and Glitter Cymru um, virtual, um, virtual Pride. And also some um, ones from the Pride Cymru Big Online Week, which is an online week held during COVID. So the move to holding virtual online pride events in 2020 meant that we had to adapt our methods collecting. Due to there being very um, few physical objects to collect, we held we switched to collecting digital, collecting um, the videos and digital marketing for the national collection. And I worked with LGBTQ plus Umri from the outset to make sure that the entire programme of the first Wales wide virtual pride 
was collected and is now preserved in the archive as a per permanent record of that um, important event. And I think these virtual prides are important as they really show how Wales is LGBTQ plus community adapted to the COVID-19 um, crisis. Um, following the lifting of COVID restrictions, we had a vast number of first Pride events happening across Wales again, places, small places such as Clangin, Dodd Wells, Hay and Wye and Cowbridge, amongst many other others. So um, told a little bit about, about how we've been developing the collection, but it's also important to um, to think about what we're going to be doing with the collection, how we're going to be using this collection, um, you know, the purpose of collecting and how we're going to be using them in displays, exhibitions and events. And we currently have three exhibitions at St Fagans that contain LGBTQ plus objects. This is Wales is Proud. 2022 was the 50th anniversary of the first UK Pride in London. And this um, display showcases some of the objects collected on the themes of protest and pride. One case collecting, um, containing objects relating to the Cardiff Gay Liberation Front in section 28, and then the more recent trans rights protests. The second case containing um, some of the objects I've mentioned relating to pride events happening in Wales from 1985 onwards. And between them then the glitter banner I mentioned earlier. And I think what's really important is that this display would not have been possible when I first, um, before I'd started my collecting in 2019. Um, and that most of the objects collected here have been part of my contemporary collecting work, thus really um, showing how powerful contemporary collecting can be in increasing the visibility of a community and heritage organisations. And this displays on until the end of um, this year. And this is um, Wales is remembering Terence Higgins. Terry was um, Higgins was born in Pembrokeshire in 1945, and in 1982, one of the first people in the UK to die of AIDS. This display here displays um, a portrait created in 2022 for the 40th anniversary by the artist Nathan Wyburn, made using um, the ink stamps of the Terence Higgins Trust um, heart logo. And displayed next to it is um, the original plaque from a tree that was dedicated in 1994 to commemorate all the people who have died of AIDS in Wales. And the tree is in the Gorseth Gardens in front of the National Museum in, in Cardiff. And the, pack, the plaque was rededicated in um, 2021, and we were donated the um, original plaque. But I think what's really important as well about the, um, the tree in the Gorseth Gardens is that a couple of years back, um, a vigil was restarted that was held on each day on um, the 1st of December, World AIDS Day at the tree. Um, and again, this year, it's going to be held um, on the 1st of December, starting with an event at the National Museum in Cardiff. And I don't believe that this um, connection with the museum may not have happened had it not been for Anne for Cymru now actively collecting and promoting the importance of LGBTQ plus history in Wales. So finally, all just um, all these objects, just, just to say that all these objects can be searched and viewed on the museum's collections online website. And there's a, there's a link to that on the main Anne for Cymru um, Museum Wales website. And as I've been collecting the objects, I thought it was very important that I made sure that all objects were digitized and properly catalogued as they entered um, the collection so that they now form an important resource that gives permanent visibility to our community and that is accessible um, across Wales and beyond. So it'd be, you know, I hope it'd be good if you were able to take a look at that and um, see how that collection is growing and how it's constantly being added to. And then finally, just to sum up, I think the power of um, contemporary collecting is that it gives the ability for objects and stories to resonate with the community and with the issues they are currently experiencing. Contemporary collecting is essential to um, rapidly respond to current events and to build up a more meaningful collection. And as, as, as I have hopefully um, shown here, it can also greatly help in building up a collection from an underrepresented communities and assist in heritage organisation properly representing the communities they represent and help in diversifying the um, stories they tell. So thank you very much for listening today. And if you wanted to follow me um, and the collecting work, my details are here. Great. Thank you.